In this video, we will introduce a new topic of chemical kinetics. Kinetics is the study of how fast a chemical reaction occurs. Reaction rates are described by the stoichiometry of a chemical reaction, which relates the change in the concentrations of the reactants and products as the reaction proceeds. In this video, we will also cover average and instantaneous rates. Let's start off by defining some common terms we will use for this topic. Again, kinetics is the study of how fast a chemical reaction occurs. If something is thermodynamically favored, this means it will happen eventually. Take for example the chemical reaction of carbon diamond resulting in carbon graphite. This reaction is thermodynamically favored. It will eventually happen. It will just take millions of years. So therefore, this reaction is not kinetically favored. Kinetic favoring happens when a chemical reaction has enough kinetic energy to move out of its current position. Carbon diamond will not move out of its current position, so don't worry about selling any of your jewelry. The stoichiometry of a chemical reaction are the coefficients that appear before the chemical product and the reactants. Nitrogen trioxide decomposes to NO2 and O2 in the following reaction. 2NO3 gas results in 2NO2 gas plus O2 gas. For this reaction, there are two ways of measuring rate. The first way is the speed at which the products appear. In this reaction, this is the change in concentration of NO2 and O2 per unit time. The second way is the speed at which the reactants disappear. In this reaction, this is the change in concentration of NO3 per unit time. We will represent a substance concentration with brackets around that substance. In these equations, time is represented by a lowercase t. The rate of change in the concentration of a reactant, delta concentration of reactant per delta time, is negative because reactant concentrations decrease as a reaction proceeds. The most useful unit to use for rates is molarity per second or moles per liter times second. Since the volume is constant, molarity and moles are directly proportional. NO2 and O2 have different rates of appearance because they have different coefficients in the balanced equation. Two moles of NO2 appear for every one mole of O2 that appears. However, 2 moles of NO3 are consumed for every 2 moles of NO2 and 1 mole of O2 that forms. Let's express these relative rates of change using an equation. Negative the change in concentration of NO3 per the change in time equals the change in concentration of NO2 per the change in time equals 2 times the change in concentration of O2 per the change in time. The negative sign is in this equation because the measured rate of any reaction is defined as a positive quantity. The equation describes the rate at which reactants form products, so a negative sign is used for the reactant's rate to obtain an overall positive value for the reaction rate. The 2 is placed in front of the oxygen's rate because the rate of increase in the concentration of NO2 is twice the rate of increase in concentration of O2. When these values are multiplied by 2, they equal the increasing rate of change of NO2. Now, let's rearrange this equation by dividing all the values by 2. We end up with negative 1 half the change in concentration of NO3 per delta time equals 1 half the change in concentration of NO2 per delta time equals the change in concentration of O2 per delta T. This means that the concentration of O2 increases at half the rate of an increase in the concentration of NO2 and half the rate of decrease in the concentration of NO3. The coefficients in front of the reactants and products in the balanced equation became the reciprocal in the equation expressing the relative rates of change of reactants and products. This is true for all reactions. To give all the rates positive values, the rates representing decreasing reactant concentration get minus signs. To determine the actual rates of change, we need to do experiments. To express the rate of change, it is conventional to use the rate of change of the reactant or product with a coefficient of 1 in the balanced equation. In our example, this would be O2, but it doesn't have to be this product. 
what is the rate of change of the concentration of NO2 and O2 in our example reaction if delta concentration of NO3 per delta time is negative 2.3 millimolar per minute? We know that negative one-half the change in concentration of NO3 per delta time equals one-half the change in concentration of NO2 per delta time, which equals the change in concentration of O2 per delta T. Since the delta concentration of NO3 per delta time is negative 2.3 millimolar per minute, we just have to switch the sign to get our rate of change in the concentration of NO2. The delta concentration of NO2 per delta time equals 2.3 millimolar per minute. To find the rate of change of O2, we need to remember that O2 increases at half the rate of NO2. So therefore, the rate of change of O2 equals one half times 2.3 millimolar per minute, which equals 1.2 millimolar per minute. Another example of reaction rates is dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5, decomposing to give nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen trioxide. N2O5 gas results in NO2 gas plus NO3 gas. Suppose we monitor the concentration of reactant versus time and we get this data. We can see from this data that the concentration of the reactant is decreasing over time, which makes sense because this is a decomposition reaction. Also, we are interested in the speed in which the reactants disappear from this chemical reaction. If we graph this data by putting concentration on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, we end up with a plot that looks like this. To determine the average rate of this reaction, pick two time points from the table and calculate the slope of the line. This isn't truly slope because this is a curve, and slope usually only refers to straight lines. For example, using the first two time points, the average rate of change of the concentration of N2O5 is the delta of the concentration of N2O5 per delta time. This equals the concentration of N2O5 at 1.45 seconds minus the concentration of N2O5 at 0 seconds divided by the time at 1.45 seconds minus the time at 0 seconds, which equals 1.250 molarity minus 1.500 molarity divided by 1.5 seconds minus 0 seconds. This equals negative 0.172 molarity divided by seconds. But remember, measured rate of any reaction is defined as a positive quantity. So therefore, our rate of change of the disappearance of N2O5 is negative the delta concentration of N2O5 divided by delta time, which equals negative the negative of 0.172 molar divided by seconds which is equivalent to 0.172 molar per second. Since this line is a curve and we are not truly measuring slope of the line, the average rate of change is going to change depending on which two points you are using. To determine the instantaneous rate of this reaction, we need to draw a line that is tangent to the curve and determine its slope because it will be a straight line. The difference between the average and the instantaneous speed is analogous to the difference between the average and instantaneous speeds of you when you drive your car. You might drive, on average, 50 miles per hour to get home, but you could have sped up to 60 miles per hour when accelerating to get on a highway ramp, and you could have slowed down to 45 miles per hour when you saw that police car behind you. To find the instantaneous rate of a reaction, it is best to plot your graphs in Excel to determine the tangent lines to the graph at a specific time. Then pick two points around the specific time and estimate your concentration at these points. Then find the slope by taking the rise over the run of this straight line. We will do a problem calculating instantaneous rate in our example problems. Again, since your tangent slope will change depending on what time you are using on the graph, your instantaneous rate of the reaction will also change. Now we will work on some example problems using the concepts discussed in this video. 1. Catalytic converters in automobiles combat air pollution by converting NO and CO into N2 and CO2. 
via this equation, 2 CO gas plus 2 NO gas results in N2 gas plus 2 CO2 gas. A. Express the rate of reaction in terms of the rate of change of each reactant and product. B. Which product is formed at a higher rate? C. How is the rate of formation of N2 related to the consumption of NO? We know that for part A, the rate of reactions for reactants are negative because reactants concentrations decrease as the reaction proceeds. So for part A, the rate of reactions will be equal to negative one-half the change in concentration of CO per delta time equals negative one-half the change in concentration of NO per delta time equals the change in concentration of N2 per delta time equals one-half the change in concentration of CO2 per delta T. For part B, concentrate on the product side of the equation, which equals the change in concentration of N2 per delta time equals one-half the change in concentration of CO2 per delta time. This means that the concentration of N2 is produced at half the rate of CO2. Therefore, CO2 is produced at a higher rate. The balanced equation indicates that one mole of N2 is produced for every two moles of NO that are consumed. This means that the rate of formation of N2 is one-half the rate of consumption for NO for part C. 2. Phosphorus pentafluoride can be produced by phosphine by the equation 2 pH3 gas plus 5 F2 gas results in 2 PF5 gas plus 3 H2 gas. At a moment in time, PF5 gas is being produced at 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per minute. A. At what rate is F2 gas reacting? B. At what rate is H2 gas being produced? The rate of reactions will be equal to negative one-half the change in concentration of pH3 per delta time equals negative one-fifth the change in concentration of F2 per delta time equals one-half the change in concentration of PF5 per delta time equals one-third the change in concentration of H2. 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per minute equals the change in concentration of PF5 per delta time. And for part A, they want to know the change in concentration of F2. This will equal 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per minute times negative 2 fifths, which equals negative 1.20 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per minute. For part B, they want to know the rate of H2 being produced. This will be 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per minute times 2 thirds, which will equal 2.00 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per minute. 3. Nitrogen oxide and oxygen combine to form nitrogen dioxide via this equation. 2 NO gas plus O2 gas results in 2 NO2 gas. On this graph of the concentrations of these products and reactants versus time, identify which line corresponds to which reactant or product. You know that the reactants will be consumed and the product will be produced by this reaction. There is only one product and there is only one line in the graph, the solid or gray line, that is being produced. Therefore, the solid gray series three line corresponds to NO2. The two lines that show the reactants being consumed have different rates of reaction. This corresponds to the coefficients of the two reactants in the balanced equation. Since O2 only has one coefficient, this means it will be consumed at a lower rate than the NO. It, therefore, is the hashed orange line, series 2. The NO is the tighter hashed blue, series 1 line. 4. The following data were collected for the dimerization of ClO to Cl2O2 at 298 Kelvin. Plot the concentration of ClO as a function of time and determine the instantaneous rate of change at 1 second and the average rate of change between 3 and 4 seconds. To plot this data, it is best to open a blank Excel workbook. Type in time in the first box and reactant concentration in the second box. 
Then type in the numbers in the table under each column. An easy way to type exponential notation is to type the letter E and then the scientific notation. Then highlight the numbers with your mouse and click on the insert tab and then click on the down arrow next to the scatter button in the chart area. Select scatter with smooth lines and markers. This chart is created on your spreadsheet. Click on the insert tab and then click shapes. Select line and draw a long line so that it just touches the one second point on your curve. Click on the Drawing Tools Format tab and click the Rotate button on the right. Choose More Rotation Options. Click the up or down arrow next to the rotation field in the dialog box that appears to rotate the line on the curve. When the line is equidistant from both sides of the curve, click OK. To calculate the instantaneous rate of change, now you're going to have to do some estimating. I estimate that the one second tangent line hits the line 1.50 times 10 to the 11th concentration at 0 0.5 seconds and that it hits the 5.00 times 10 to the 10th line at 1.7 seconds. Pause the video now to see if you can do this yourself on Excel. Do you agree with my estimations? To calculate a slope and an instantaneous rate, take the rise over the run or the difference in the concentrations over the difference in the time. This will equal 5.00 times 10 to the 10th molar minus 1.50 times 10 to the 11th molar divided by 1.7 minus 0 0.5 seconds. This will equal negative 8.3 times 10 to the 10th molar per second. The instantaneous rate of change at one second is closer to the initial rate of the reaction than the instantaneous rate of change at later times. This is because one second is closer to the top of the curve and its slope will be a larger number than the later times. The initial rate of reaction are bigger than the rates closer to the end of the reaction because when we have more reactant molecules, there will be more collisions which will lead to faster rate of reaction. To find the average rate of reaction between 3 and 4 seconds, take the concentration at 3 seconds, 4.99 times 10 to the 10th, and subtract it from the concentration at 4 seconds, 3.93 times 10 to the 10th, and divide this by 4 seconds minus 3 seconds we come up with an answer of negative 1.06 times 10 to the 10th.